Hey, so here's a review on this uh, Coolmaster uh, battery capacity tester. Uh, so what this does is it discharges your battery and it keeps track of the amount of power it's pulling out of your battery. Um, and yeah, you can, that way you can test the capacity of your battery. You just fully charge it and then you can discharge it down to whatever voltage you want on this and keep track of it. Um, today I'm gonna test this really small uh, lithium ion cell. I've tested it, it's got about three amp hours in it, about 2.9 amp hours. Um, but we'll see how well this actually does on that. Um, but you could do much larger cells too. You could even do, for example, some of those 280 uh, amp hour Eve or Lysian cells. It's just, you know, you can only pull, um, I think up to 190 watts. So, uh, you know, and I think a maximum of 10 amps. So you can only pull 10 amps. So it would take about 28 hours to test the, um, to test the capacity of those with one of these, but uh, it probably could be done. Um, so let's take a look at this thing real quick. Uh, it comes with external power source and power supply, which is great. Um, it also uh, comes with these two alligator clips connected to it via USB, but you can connect directly to it with your, if you don't want to use the USB cable, there's a positive and a negative right here. There's, um, and then there's like USB-C and some of these other ones. I, I don't know actually how those work. Uh, I have no instructions available, but I'm sure they work just fine if you can figure it out. Um, and then there's a fine and a coarse knob to control how much amperage you're pulling out of the battery. And then there's a button. Uh, so let's go through the button real quick. So the main, the button will just cycle through the different options for you. It will turn on the light when you do so, which is nice. The main screen is in Chinese, but uh, here's the, here's some other screens. This is the screen I like. Uh, it thinks there's about 0 0.03 amps. So right now I can tell you off the bat, this measurement is, is good, but not great. Not perfectly accurate. It tells you the voltage um, and it will also record the time for you. Um, unfortunately, the screen goes off too soon. Let's go back. Uh, it's gonna record the time for you, the wattage, uh, the watt hours and the amp hours, okay? Also, you can uh, you get another screen like this, similar, all very similar. Uh, this is the backlight, how long you want it to stay on. So in order to increase this number, I just have to click twice. It's gonna go up by one every time. If I click twice and hold, it's gonna start counting up and it will increase that to, let's say 30 seconds, okay? If I wanna go down, I have to click three times. That'll go down one. I click if and if I hold at the end, it'll keep going down. Okay, let's go to the next screen. Uh, this is over voltage protection. So interesting that you'd have over voltage protection because you know you're not. It's not like you're charging batteries with these. You're just discharging them. So over voltage protection would really only kick in if you started at a higher voltage than you wanted. Um, but yeah, over voltage protection is a thing. Um, I'm not going to play with that because we're going to start uh, probably at around four volts and go down to three. This is the important part. This is the under voltage protection, right? This is low voltage protection. This is when the this you know discharge is going to stop. You're going to start discharging your battery, and you want to make sure it stops, right? We don't want it discharging the battery below zero percent. Obviously, we can damage our batteries if we if we, the voltage is too low. So what you want to do is set your low voltage protection. So we'll go back to low voltage protection, and we're gonna for the purposes of this cell go to three. So click it twice and hold. I guess click it twice once to get it going, and then click it twice again, hold. And there it goes. We get a stop at three. Boom, right? If we want to go down, I can click it three times. It'll go down one. If I hold them the third time, it'll hold it down. But again, we want to go back to three. Whoops. Uh, yeah, so this happens sometimes. It seems like it gets stuck in a mode where if, if I go down for a while, and then when I just do two, it goes down. But it's either two or three and then hold and that'll move it up or down. Um, so now it's on three volts. The other thing is this is, um, you know, this is maximum discharge, so it's not gonna let you pull more than 102 amps, but don't worry, this thing can't pull 100, more than 102 amps, even at, you know, basically any voltage. And this is over power protection, so it's not gonna pull more than 190 watts. Uh, but it can't really pull more than that anyway. This is the max it's gonna pull, but if you wanna make sure it doesn't pull too much, you can also lower this. But again, given that you know the power curves of your, um, oh, that's 30 volts, what? It's not 30 volts in there. Three volts. Okay. Um, given that you know, uh, you know how much voltage you're pulling out, I don't use this. I tend to just use the low voltage protection. So now it's saying yes. Uh, notice that once you set the low voltage protection, it's going to beep at you if nothing's plugged in, which is really annoying, right? You want us the low voltage protection, but <clears throat> as far as this is concerned, there's just the voltage is zero, so it's it's going off. So when you're done, you always want to make sure to go back <clears throat> to low voltage protection. You want to go back to the low voltage protection screen, and um, lower this back down to zero. Otherwise, as long as it's plugged in, it's gonna beep, which is really, really annoying. Um, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and test this. So let's hook this up to the positive right here. 
and we'll hook this up to the negative right there. And we should be cooking. And we can see the voltage is 4.18 volts, which is exactly what it should be. This is just recently charged. Um, and let's go up. We'll start with the course. Um, I would like to discharge this at a rate of around a half a C. Um, so I think that's one and a half amps. So we'll go to 1.09. You can see it's pretty sensitive. The voltage is dipping immediately and we'll go up to one and a half amps. Great. So now it's keeping track. Um, when you, after I've done this, I can clear the screen by just holding this button on this screen. Okay. And now, yeah, this should go for a while now without any issue whatsoever. Um, yeah. So let me check one other thing for us. I've got this handy dandy amp monitor and we'll just zero that out for us right there. We can see it's zero and let's see how many amps we've got going. And this is reading about, whoop, let's get it better. Let's get it really in there. Whoops. This is reading 1.59, 1.58. Let's see if you can get that. See what it's reading? 1.6 amps, right? And we're pulling 1.55. So this is slightly underestimating the amps, but it's actually pretty much on point. So yeah, the battery discharge, it's doing a really good job. It's not perfectly accurate. I've done some other tests where I found it to be a little bit low. Um, and let's just check the voltage real quick as well. It's saying that voltage is 3.81. And I'm reading a voltage of on the battery of about 4.1. Um, I don't think this is due to wire losses or the nickel loss. I've tested it, um, you know, myself other elsewhere, and uh, it didn't seem to have that problem. So I, the issue with this, the only real problem I've had is I think the amps are a little bit low, but that's not a huge problem. I find the voltage is a little bit low, which I don't like, um, because what that tends to have, what that tends to mean is that the low voltage protection kicks in before this battery is actually done. So you have to go in and you kind of tend to have to put the low, if I, if I actually want to discharge only to three volts, I might have to set this to sort of something like 2.7. That's my main problem with it. But anyway, uh, I'm going to let this run for a while uh, and we'll come back and check, check on it. Uh, but I expect it to pull about three amps. So this should take us um, about two hours and uh, we'll come back in two hours. Okay. So let's see what happened. Uh, we hit three volts. Um, I pushed okay, it paused, the voltage is briefly above 3.06 again, three, point, uh, 3 volts. Let's check the voltage. Make sure you guys can see, let's check the voltage. So see, this is reading 3.37, so that's way above what this is reading. This is reading currently, as soon as it puts a... 3.34. Voltage will drop really quickly. See, their voltage dropped again. But so far, this is red, 2.24, uh, 2.42. So a little less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the low voltage limit. I'm gonna lower that to 2.8 and let it go a little longer. See, so this is the thing I have to, we have to do to accommodate the fact that this consistently, um, just see, we're just below three volts, it says, but when I check with my amp meter, amp meter we're definitely still well, we're at 3.3. So we're still well, well above, it's measuring about even with the voltage drop, because I know the voltage drops when we put a load on this, but even with the voltage drop, it's still off by about 0.3 volts. So that's the only issue I'm seeing. So we'll let this run a little bit longer and see, um, see what happens. So I'll consider this uh, experiment done. Um, okay, so let's turn this off. So what's the moral of the story here? So when we're done with this, we wanna run the experiment, we can disconnect this. We can um, go back. We have to turn off this low voltage protection, otherwise it's just gonna keep beeping on us. So let's just hold that down, go down to zero. So yeah, what do I think about this? Well, look, it works pretty well. There's not a lot to complain about. Um, 
but there's a few big issues. Uh, but firstly, let's talk about what works. So it does a good job. It's recording the, um, where does it say the total amp hours for me? I think, I guess I already said it by, I reset it by accident. Um, interesting. It's recorded the time. The amp hours aren't there. Uh, really strange. Uh, it actually does typically record the amp hours, but I guess I'm going to reset this real quick. It's, time is still intact. Somehow the amp hours got reset, which is really strange because it actually usually does remember the amp hours. Um, but uh, let's ignore that for now. That was a weird, that's weird. And maybe I pressed the button too long and reset it. Um, but, you know, this works pretty well. Uh, it's really straightforward. It's not complicated to use. It's pretty affordable. Uh, it has everything you want right on board. So, you know, you know, nothing's complicated. Okay. So what's not to like, uh, well, as we saw, the voltage measurement isn't really accurate. Um, it's not a huge deal, but you're going to have to, you know, monitor it. If you want to cut off at three volts, you might have to stop it at 2.7. If you want to, you know, stop it at 12 volts and you might have to adjust it to 11.7. Um, so, it will do a good job of cutting off, but when you're trying to eke out that last 5-10% of your battery, you might have to monitor this and continue to lower the low voltage disconnect just because your voltage might be off. Uh, and my voltage is a little low, but you could always get a model that has a voltage that's a little high. Uh, same thing with the amperage. I think the amperage is a little low on the one I have. It could easily be a little high uh, on the one you have. You're going to have to see and try to make adjustments accordingly. So get something that can measure the amperage, and then you can find, figure out, okay, on average, maybe this is off by about 10%, so I should increase my estimates by 10%, or maybe it's up about by 10 um, But, you know, this is consumer grade, and it's not expensive, so it's not going to be really accurate. You're going to have to play a little bit with the voltage, a little bit with the amps, and I just wouldn't take anything you get from this to be gospel. Uh, it's just not a factor. It's only going to give you a ballpark, but it could be off by a factor of, I'd say safely, it could be off by 10%. So if you think you have 100 amps in, uh, in your battery, it could easily be 110 or 100 or 90, depending on, on what you estimate with this. So is this great? Is it the best product ever? No, but it's absolutely pretty good at doing the job when it comes to just estimating battery capacities. I think it's not going to be really accurate for something that's really small. Uh, I think something, you know, when it's bigger, you might get a bigger estimate. When it's really small, you know, it looks like I'm off half an amp. Um, and that looks like a huge percentage of the battery, right? If I think it's three and it's off half an amp, it's off by like a, a factor of one sixth, which is pretty high. Uh, that's like about 15%. Whereas if you have a bitter, bigger battery um, and it's not quite as finicky, you might expect to get something a little bit closer to what it actually is. And I think, I think it'd be probably closer, um, or at least you could estimate uh, a little more precisely how off it is. But overall, it works well. It's really, really easy to use. Um, and if you don't want to spend a lot of money in a complicated way to figure out battery capacity, there's really no easier off-the-shelf solution than this. Um, so I would say definitely use it, but know the limitations. Be perfectly aware that you could get a model that's off a fair amount. You should be double-checking it with your, uh, you know, double-checking the voltage. You should be double-checking the amps that's coming out of it and making sure it works. Okay? And as always, if this video is uh, useful to you, please like and subscribe. Uh, and I've got an affiliate link for just this product uh, right below. Thank you.